Oh, my gosh. Mm. Gilbert Gottfried, for the first time on the show. There he yeah. is. Hello. Let's give you a little uh, clap. You, you, <laughs> you see now, if it was a real radio station, you'd have like a little bell. A little bell? Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, it's our first time caller. Or, <laughs> right. Or like, yeah, like a bell or a, a siren buzzer. or something. Yeah. A little oh. sound we play when a new guest arrives. Oh, yes. Or one of those, those <laughs> uh, like New Year's things. Uh, that you're, a a noise, noise maker. maker. Yeah, a noise maker. <laughs> Just something to announce that we have a new friend on the show. So can yes. we do it for the second time you're in? This is Ho hopefully there'll be a second time and then we'll oh, we'll do it oh, oh, we'll okay. do it the right way we'll do it the right way for you yeah we never do it first time the second time we're all the noisemakers yes. that's yeah. the celebration of a friendship renewed <laughs> <laughs> do you know uh, Mark Norman oh How you doing? yes yeah yes. we've met years ago yes. I drove you to a strip club in Philadelphia no that doesn't sound like me at uh, all oh no maybe yeah. it was uh, Monique it was somebody <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> So where was this? We did, uh, I'd open for you at Helium, I don't know, 2013 or something, and uh, you wanted to go, so I drove you, and then we couldn't find it. It was an hour drive. We didn't say a word the whole drive, <laughs> and then we couldn't find it, I drove you right back. Ah. Not, you... a, not a word said. Did that you... sounds about right. Yeah, it was a good time. I, yeah. I, I, <laughs> I went to one strip club in uh, Philly, uh -huh. and they called it the Elephant Graveyard. It was. Oh, wow. Because, I mean, big, said, big ladies? No, it's where the, the older ones go to die. Oh. Yeah. Like oh. yes. And it's they like had their their chain by one leg. <laughs> it was like their last stop. Oh, and, it, wow. and it was known to be the Elephant Graveyard. I love it. And it became a thing yeah. uh, with the guys down there. Like, you want to go to the Elephant Graveyard? Fuck it. It was kind of it was kind of fun. It was yeah. kind of cool. You ever been to the Claremont in Atlanta? No. It's just old, I don't know, maybe. hideous. Like, all the ugly oh. rejects go. And, they, and they're and amazing. One girl could smash a beer can with her boobs. Uh, oh, I hate all, that. They're, they're all horrific. That was tricks. That was part of the documentary on the Atlanta strip clubs. Oh, yeah. It's got to be. It's yes. quite legendary. New, New York was one of the last places to actually have attractive strippers, it mm. seems like. Because for years, it was like... Like junkies, you know, <laughs> yeah. like girls with track marks all over their arms, and then all of a sudden it seemed like there was this new idea hey, how about attractive girls naked? Yes, you know, and that was like became a gentleman's club thing. Well, yeah, yes, yeah. Well, I, I mean, I, I grew up on Long Island, and you, you know you weren't getting quality out there, because if, if it was a quality girl, they were going to the city. Oh, uh, yeah. The, <laughs> they, they could make so much more money. So I remember all the scars and all sorts of oh, actions yeah. going on on their bodies. Yeah, bullet holes <laughs> yes, in them for and stuff. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> they have the Hustler Club. There's the Penthouse Club. There's Score. There's so many where there's really good-looking girls. I prefer, I like them a little bit. I like a B club or a C club. I don't like the mm. A club. You want a little? Oh. Uh, you want a, uh, just a headquarters? Yeah, that's a good club. I mean, you I want like a couple a little... drops of skank. Yeah, yeah. Just, a little bit. <laughs> yeah. just a little bit, that, right? That little that, dirt. That sounds like it would be in a commercial <laughs> yes. with just a couple of drops of skank. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like a sparkling drop of rinsing. Right, you know? right. You want? You don't want it. You want something going on? If just you, a little bit. If you need to clean up this miscarriage. Just <laughs> oh, get yeah. a couple of drops. <laughs> Gilbert, I love that laugh. I have That's to a great you, ad for a Swiffer, too. Yeah. <laughs> I have right. to tell Gilbert to your face. I've said it uh, a couple times on the show recently. Um, Eric, one of our guys, he turned me on to your podcast. And oh, yeah. And I'm not a big movie guy, I, you know, here and there. But you guys go pretty deep with the movies and stuff. But it's so fucking funny, man. Oh, thank and, you. And the uh, the episode you did with Artie Lang and uh, talking about Tracy Morgan. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> so dark. I don't think I've ever heard anything darker and so funny at the same time. Uh, that we actually grabbed that and just threw it on our channel. Oh, yes. Without even asking yeah, permission. I'm like, that's fine. <laughs> I'm like, we're just playing this. I'm not even asking anybody. <laughs> just basically saying how Tracy was milking it a little bit. Uh, oh, yeah. A little yeah. bit. Because it seemed like, yeah, we, we both kind of got the impression he was walking around with the neck brace. <laughs> you know, like, uh, hey, see, I'm injured. Yeah. I'm injured. <laughs> and, um, and then... When uh, Alec Baldwin and Tina Fey went on, like, the Saturday Night Live 40th and stood there very solemnly, practically doing the uh, the Tracy Morgan obituary, <laughs> right. I thought, you know, this is like, you could see the dollar signs 
ringing up. It, it certainly helped him out in the end. Yeah, you, you know, like... You, you guys were under the impression that Tracy definitely could have made it to the SNL 4. Uh, yeah, yeah. And I, I thought, but this is so much better. Because you figure if you're like Walmart, and they're saying we really miss our friend and our our heart goes out to his loved ones they they go okay just sign the check <laughs> right, yeah. just, anything they want <laughs> just, just give it, it to them. them you think sam walton called the lawyer <laughs> stop litigating <laughs> 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 fucking give him the money make him sign a non-disclosure yeah. Yeah, but it's Gilbert Gottfried's amazing colossal podcast yes, yes. on GilbertGottfried.com. Subscribe to it on iTunes or SideshowNetwork.tv. And we have an upcoming episode with, I forget the guest name. Oh, I don't know. I think you've got quite a delightful episode planned. If, I'm... <laughs> if I might interject. Yeah, Jim's going to be on the podcast. On when, next two, week? Next Tuesday. Next week? It's at the Littlefield Theater, which is, uh, where is that? It's part of New York Super Week. I don't know what that is. Is that a podcast week or uh, something? Yeah. Oh, it's big. Oh. I have no idea <laughs> yeah, either. Oh, so you do it live sometimes, huh? Yeah. The podcast? Yeah. We, let's see. Yeah, we did a couple of live ones. That's a little intimidating at times, even though you guys are used to being in front of people. I like that, though. I, I like having can, the audience You can play there. off the, ener uh, the energy of the room, yeah, right? Yeah, because I'll throw out some really good riffs. Like, I'll see a guy's <laughs> shirt. <laughs> I'll see a guy with a striped shirt, and I'll be like, hey, it looks like you fell through an awning. You know, the people will laugh. Oh, that's clever. Oh, and I can and do my old, hey, that Asian guy in the third row. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm a nice guy. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, how, how uh, six o'clock, where is the Littlefield Theater? In uh, Littlefield, yes. I guess. I don't, I have no idea. Yeah, we'll get uh, Is that Brooklyn or Manhattan? You, you could... Uh, you you could get it from oh, Brooklyn. Uh, Brooklyn. Oh, Brooks Park Slope, yeah. At littlefieldnyc.com, I think. That's what it is. Because yeah. my I think my website blew up or something. Oh, I hope no yeah. one was injured. <laughs> <laughs> you don't pay attention to the website, uh, Gilbert. <laughs> but, so what movies do you talk about? Uh, oh, a, a bunch. Well, well, you're the guy. Who's the guy that does the show with you? Oh, Frank Santo Padre. Yeah, he yeah. He, he knows his movies. He, yeah, he, he's uh, he plays the straight man to Gilbert's uh, yeah uh, laugh. Yeah, <laughs> he's, he's hilarity. <laughs> they he's, only talk about Aladdin and Problem Child. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's the George Fenneman to my Groucho. You yes, know? Like, mm, yes. Well, He alone. tries to keep it in line. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and some sometimes he has a very tough time doing that. <laughs> his Gilbert just goes off. <laughs> It's really, really good. I don't listen to a lot of podcasts, Gilbert. That's why I, I, I want to make sure you know this. It's, oh, it's, it's, thank it's, it's very good. Are you a, are you a bigger movie guy or is he? Uh, oh, I I love old movies. Yeah. Old movies, old TV, old show business. Um, but and and that's the thing. Like the whole reason, I I the whole idea for this show is like dying out. It's like every one of these people. That I would have liked to have talked to each day. Mm. You find out they drop dead. Right. right. Who was uh, your favorite guest so far? Oh, God. There's been From so... movies. From movies. Oh, from movies. From the movie oh, world. Oh, well, uh, Danny Aiello Ooh. was a lot of fun. He was out oh. of, he's out of his mind. That's right here. Yeah, 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 that yeah. Ford Apache fucking toss off the roof was oh, a great yes. moment. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So he was great. Yeah. Um... And uh, let's see. We oh, we had on two p oh three cast members of Batman. Mm. Uh, Batman himself, Adam West. Wow. Uh, Julie Newmar, who oh, was Catwoman. So sure. hot. Lee Merriweather, who was the other Catwoman. Sure. What and about uh, Burt Ward? Oh, oh no, yeah. we haven't gotten Bert yet. I heard he had a giant cock, and they had to cover it with two. <laughs> they were, they yeah. were, we were talking about that. Oh, is it true that, that they he... tried to put padding or something just to kind of tape it down? Enormous cock. That's so really? great. <laughs> wow, that's <laughs> good for him. That's a good problem. Did he ever yeah. do anything else? Like I never saw him in anything really. else. Didn't he go uh, into porn? No. I think he went into porn. No, Bert Ward. I thought he went into porn. Yeah. Probably, uh, We're gonna look that up Who right am I now. Thinking of? We got the old uh, Google up here. Oh, Henry Winkler. Oh, is was... he the nicest guy you've ever met? Oh yeah. Hi, I just want to say it's an honor <laughs> to be here on your radio show. You are a true artist, 
and radio <laughs> is in appreciate your greatness <laughs> in a way that no other one can. I think <laughs> you are like Christ returning to the earth. <laughs> he is a very soft spoken yes, man. Yes. Very genteel. <laughs> very genteel man. Yes. I think he finally but lovely. He's a lovely man. <laughs> I think he finally figured us out. He used to do our show. Yeah. And, and we would we would be dumbfounded. We're like He's too nice for us. And we we actually had a good time with him. Yeah, he'll come back. He's, he's a lovely I don't man. know. We haven't had him in a while now. He hasn't so been I, here much. You know, he's, I don't know. Well, he's the fun. Uh, his only notable appearance since was the role of teacher Dick Murphy in the low-budget <laughs> and softcore porn film Virgin ah, High. Yes. Softcore. Okay. That's All Burt right. Ward. That's softcore. Is he alive? Softcore. Is he alive? Yeah, well, what is softcore? What do they show? The uh, boobies? Nah, just tits and ass, but there'll be no like, insertion. Yeah. So you don't get to see his giant no, dick. No genitals at all. No. No, no, of course. no. I've watched them shoot that. They don't like, even show them. There's no. nothing. I watched them shoot porn, and I watched them shoot. They also did a, like a rated uh, a, a single X version or a, a version that wasn't hardcore, and that looked like it was harder to shoot because there's a guy and a girl, and they're mashing their genitals together, but you can't see the genitals, and they're yeah. fucking hard, but there's no intercourse, mm. and that that to me looked a lot harder than the actual sex. Oh yeah, you you just like pounding your dick against, yeah, against something the, on the outside of something, yeah. and you can't uh, actually stick it in where it belongs. Um, is there underwear or is there? No, they were nude. Oh wow. Yeah, because when you watch like you know it's like that that kind of porn they have in hotels uh-huh. which is horrible yes and worst. it's like so they're naked and they're on top of each it's well it's just like when times square <laughs> used to have the uh live sex acts uh-huh. and they'd be naked and on top of each other but they, you knew they weren't really. Yeah, yeah. they weren't actually really doing sex. anything. Yeah, you need to know they're actually getting in there. Yeah, yeah. like we would do yeah. the. Uh, we I used to go with Florentine and Bob Levy and, and Voss, but the old Peep shows. Like there was one on Fifty Fourth that was so great. Oh yeah, and it had a window. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> it had a window that. Oh, would open. I, I read about it in the New York Times. <laughs> yes, they were huge. A big article. Yes. That's how I say. Oh yeah, I've. Heard all about it. It was so. It was Fifty Fourth and Broadway, and it would, it would, the window was face height, and you would tip them, and that was where I would eat girls' asses. Really? Yeah. It was for five dollar tip, and she would put her ass right in the window, and God knows what other men were doing. It, you, like you don't think of the other tongues that Wait, were. Wait. Oh, yeah. God. I don't think I've been to this place. Yeah. It was really I would have remembered. I, I remember we went to one back in the day. It was like an octagon, and you all had your separate like little yeah. window area, and then you could see other. Creeps Ugh. peeking in. One with my brother, we squeezed into one together, and he's grabbing at the girl's legs, and they're trying to climb out of this thing. Oh How could you be there, your brother? Oh God! Oh, we were all just uh, aunt was there, and his oh, wife at the time. There's a whole, a whole bunch of us. Wife. Just, yeah, a whole bunch of us just went. Yikes! And, and they had this. It was it, it was pretty much an octagon. I guess they had private booths as well, but it was like more of a group setting, and you could right. see everyone's windows going up. It was so uh, fucking. Just, that, oh, it was, I, more, it was more funny than like right. You know, like is that David Tell? <laughs> <laughs> when they had Show World yeah. in Times Square, it was like that. Like that. You'd be watching other guys. Stare, you'd be basically staring at other guys yeah. through the girl's legs. Yeah. It was a. Real Really? Yeah, it's bizarre, right. right? Oh, yeah. Just watching another guy ruining his life. It's like the two of you just looking at each other like, I don't know how I wound up here. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. What happened oh, to us? <laughs> one girl was just working the, the whole octagon, yeah. though. And yeah. the windows would be going up and down because then you had to get more uh, tokens. I, right, think was, right. I think it was the days of the tokens. And, uh, and then there was like where you'd put a quarter in and it would show like about like 12 seconds of a porn film. Mm-hmm. And then it would stop, and you'd have to. And I think they were purposely made for those things because it would always be like just when you thought yes. something's going to happen, it would go off. Yeah. And then it would start up again. It looks like, oh, okay, well, now it'll definitely. <laughs> and then you put it in another quarter. Yeah, it was how they fucked you. And then all of a sudden, just with the lights go back on, and you realize there's no one on the other side through the hole, and you're like, oh, no, I picked a bad one. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> I wonder if you, could, uh, y- if you could Yelp these places. You think they have Yelp for peep show places? Uh-uh. Probably back then they would have. Now I think that it would just be, I don't know why am I answering that question like it's serious. We, we no, I'm serious. I'm oh, serious. Because like, I wonder if you could, we could probably check put- it out. Out before you go, you we know. We can certainly go to Yelp. They do it for massage places. 
Oh. They, I've seen them not yelp, but there was another one where they would review massage places. Like she'll give you a hand job or she'll do this. And I, I've, I've never actually followed up on them, but they were like, go after hours if you want this or that. And, oh, that well, helps. Here, yeah, there is. Here we go on yeah. uh, Yelp. Best, oh, it is actually. Oh, best look at peep that. shows in New York City. Oh, my God. The Slipper wow. Room is a. Well, the I'm, Slipper Room. Ah, it's a great description. Four, four out of five stars for the Slipper Room. What are, what are some of the reviews here? Yeah, get some reviews. Give me uh, one good review for the Slipper Room. Egg whites on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure it's exactly what you're talking about, but it oh, says the I, singing was great. The singing oh, was great. The the maybe host, that's a euphemism. That's code. The yeah. Host so fun and funny, and the girls were so animated while they danced. Yeah, these are like fucking. Uh, uh, that, these uh, are fun places. I don't want that. I don't want a fun. That's place. burlesque. I, yeah, I heard. I heard that. I think Milton Berle said it. That Milton Berle said like. The code years ago uh, for saying like that a, a girl gave good head was you'd say, oh, yeah, she was a good singer. <laughs> so, really? yeah. Uh, so, maybe so, maybe so, yeah. I like that. Maybe something is going on there. Uh, E-Rock, who's also a big fan of Gilbert's, he said, you got to ask Gilbert about uh, Cesar Romero, who played the Joker, as we oh, know, and the I, orange wedges. I don't uh, yes, know this. Yes, I I talk about this on my podcast. Okay. I think just about three times each show. The story I heard is Cesar Romero, who most famously the Joker in the Batman series, <laughs> and uh, he was like at first, uh, yeah, there he is. He kept his mustache in that? Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. His mustache. He, he, and, I remember he refused to shave it, even yeah. though he was making good money for this. It was and, a good role for him. Yeah. And and so he was like, you know, in the movies he sang and danced and was a Latin lover and everything. But in real life he was gay. Mm. And what he was into is he would gather like the group of boy toys and he'd stand in the center of them, pull down his pants and underwear, and they'd fling orange wedges at his ass. Hmm. This was somehow he figured out that was his thing. Some people argue that it was actually tangerine. <laughs> that, that's, that's the only argument I've got. Not that it happened, but what citrus fruit it was. <laughs> the fact that citrus fruit was flung at his ass. Right. Everyone agrees. It's just what citrus fruit. That is a weird. Wow. One. What a bizarre. That fetish. is strange. And, and when do you wake? Wake up one morning and go, oh, you know what would be yeah, feels right. real good. Right. Wow, that, they call that move the soccer mom. <laughs> <laughs> wow, what, that is a bizarre. That probably happened once, and he just liked it, or I don't know how you want someone to throw well food on you. And you got to yeah. remember, it was before the internet too, so you really had to get a, imaginative with, right, your, with, your, right. with your with your stuff. I love uh, hearing you talk about old Hollywood. You have any other old Hollywood? Classic stories. I mean, what, what's your favorite old movie? Because I'm a big Kiss of Death fan. With oh, Widmark and fucking. Uh, I don't remember the guy who played Nick, the lead, and. Uh, oh, is that Vic the Martin? One? No, no, Victor Mature. Oh, oh God! Where, I where he pushes seen her down the one. steps in the wheelchair. <clears throat> yes. Yeah, <You> lying <clears throat> old hag, and he fucking ties the lady up in a fucking wheelchair. Now is that with, yeah, Richard Whitmark. And he pushes her yeah. down the steps. It's phenomenal. Yeah. It's every guy's dream. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> every time you see a wheelchair, you're like, oh, I wish there was some steps in an electrical car. And he had that laugh, like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Really psychotic. That's an amazing scene. But the, I don't like the acting back then as much. Like I, I don't like. I can't watch I, the older movies. Well, because they came from the stage. They, yeah, I was more the actual. It was a new craft. Yeah, yeah. Well, you, they had you're to find not going to do that. Yeah. What are you doing, honey? It just, yeah. What, oh, yeah. What yeah. was the first uh, big movie that changed that? You think where they you could see the the adjustment happening? Goonies. I, the Goonies. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> I guess when uh, everyone Brando says probably, Brando, right? Brando, yeah. yeah, I would say that Bogart hated him. I think he said Brando was cocky and young and arrogant, and I think Brando didn't like respect fucking Bogart as much as he wanted. Yeah, like he's like these guys. We had to wear suits in Hollywood, and then Brando's just coming in a fucking t-shirt and. Well, he really re represented the new age. I think so. For the time. Yeah. Yeah, the old was out. Here comes the new. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. I guess they they figured Marlon changed it all. Mm. I don't know. Stella. Oh, but Henry Winkler yes. basically <laughs> yes. discovered Marley Matlin. Wow. Really? Wow. Yeah. 
Did he save her from an accident somehow? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think being deaf is the most wonderful thing <laughs> in the world. I envy people who have never heard music. <laughs> you picked up on his niceness, niceness did you? Yeah, we, we we used to say as soon as he left, that's the nicest guy in oh, the world. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he's so warm. You yeah. can't even believe he played Fonzie. <laughs> Not that Fonzie was that crazy of a character, but it's very different than Henry Winkler, the man. My <laughs> character, Hank Zizzler. Is that the character? <laughs> that's the character's name that he writes Zipzer. about? Zipzer. Uh, Zipzer, right. Yeah. Hank Zipzer. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's Hank right. Zipzer. Those children's books. Yeah. Because it's uh, about a kid with dyslexia. That has a yeah. ghost friend or something. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I think, right? <laughs> and a big old secret, I bet. <laughs> and, a <Yeah>. big old <laughs> secret. <laughs> and a big old secret he's never found a way to tell people. Yes, Hank has a secret. Yeah. Henry yeah, Winkler. Hank he was also in a, mo a movie about uh, Lords of Flatbush. Yes. Oh, yes. Sylvester Stallone. Yes. Okay. Brooklyn Gang or something. Yeah, and, and Perry King. Mm hmm. And and to this day, <clears throat> I remember the theme song. Wow. wow. Yeah. Hey, hey. What do you say? Looks like it's gonna be a very fine day. My girl is with me today. Looks like some real fine things are coming my way. Hey, hey, <laughs> what do you say? Looks like it's gonna be a very fine day. Just hanging out with nothing to do. Lucky, lucky me that I bumped into you. Looking so good, looking so fine. I wonder, 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 should I make you mine? Bow, 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 bow. And then it continues. I'm suddenly oh, jealous I... of Marley Matlin. <laughs> <laughs> I want. I didn't. Right. I want to hear the opening because I remember his name Let's was Butchie. Yeah. yeah. Right. Uh, right right uh, now, Marley uh, Matlin uh, is going. Good. He please be quiet <laughs> when he's not singing, please. <laughs> oh, my oh gosh. boy. It's a little rough. How do you know this? Yes, Stallone, him. Wow, they're just standing there. Yeah. Perry King, Paul Mace. Wow, they're all equally billed. That's the chubby Stallone, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Very beefy. That's the first Rocky Stallone. The dice get his look from the early Stallone look. Yeah, he's a very uh, big yeah. Rocky guy. Travolta. Yeah. Oh, they're just putting a book. They're hiding a girl's book and putting it under their legs. It's really good natured. You know? Unlike gangs today. You yeah. fucking tie you up and shit in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> slit your throat. And throw you off the roof. That's, Harry King. Pop out. That's what Cesar Romero's gang used to yeah. <laughs> yes. The Orange Peel The Lords gang. of Flatbush are throwing orange peels into her vagina. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when I, I, I told the story when I was a kid. We wanted to form a gang. We, we never did. We called ourselves the Lords. We really were fucking mm -hmm. little jizz buckets. Oh. Uh -huh. we, we modeled. It was from there. Oh, jeez. The oh, wow. I remember Butchie broke his leg in it or something? Fonzie got hurt in it. Oh, yes. I don't remember what happened. I remember being a big Fonzie fan, as most boys our age yeah. were, and mm -hmm. um, he got hurt. Butchie got hurt, and I didn't like it because mm. he was on crutches. <laughs> I didn't like to see the Fonz on crutches. On crutches? Yeah. Showing his weakness? Yeah. This was right around the time of Happy Days starting, too, 74. When well, he barely had a role. Yeah. Remember that? Yeah. And then he became the breakout star, and they made it all about him. Was it a good movie or shit? I don't really remember. It's been oh, so many Lord years. Of... I remember it as being good. It's 1974. Wow. But so many of them don't hold up, though. You think oh, they're good, yeah. and you watch yeah. them, and you're like, oh, yeah. God, that was a timing issue. Yeah, yeah. They're... Let, let's try to think of movies I was gonna say, what that movie... just didn't hold up Yeah. Mm. all these years um, later. Oh, God, what's it called? Um, Made in America? No, wait, no, that's not the one. <laughs> is, is, that, no. is that the one? Wait, what's the one? Uh... I think you're thinking of Monster in Law. No. <laughs> no, that held up beautifully. Yeah. <laughs> no, the... Coming to America? Co no, which it's no, I was. That's still good. I know, no, I, that's a Gretz's best movie. The one I'm thinking of is the, what was the real racist one? <laughs> 
from years ago. Birth of, birth of a Nation? That, yeah, I said Made in America. Birth, birth of a Nation. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was saying Birth of a Nation. God. It oh, seems racist funny. now. Yeah. Somehow. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Then it was two yeah. thumbs up. Uh, yeah. Well, get another question from Eric. He's controlling the interview. He should just come Where in is here. He? Hang. Where he is he? likes oh, Gilbert. You, you know what? Eric, I've, come in, you fucking yeah, yeah, I, Gilbert. I've seen bits and pieces <laughs> of on TV that really is slow moving and doesn't hold up. The Sean Connery James Bond. Ah. That doesn't hold up. Yeah. Those were fun. They were kitschy, though. It yeah. was like a tongue in cheek. He was still great. I, yeah. see, I still think of him as the best James Bond. Oh, for sure. But the movies seem like they're kind of slow Those now. slower, yeah. You movies get one in, sex scene and one fight scene, and that's it. Oh, movies, yeah. in, movies in general were a lot slow. People were patient. Yeah, there was a, a, a slower pace to them. I didn't yeah. like the Roger Moore ones because he was too, he was he was too tongue in cheek. Oh yeah, over the top. Yeah. You know what I mean? The little puns and witticisms. I was like, oh fuck you. I'm a little, <laughs> little tied up right now. Yeah, I'm a little tied. Oh yeah, it's just so annoying. And he came right after Sean Connery or mm. close at. No, yeah. George uh, Lazenby. Lazen B. Well, there he had to be and, the guy that they yeah. had to sacrifice. Uh -huh. Yeah. That because was all Sean, Lazenby's fault, though. Because Sean yeah. Connery was so damn good, they knew that the next guy, that would be a tough spot. Yeah. And Although, then they found Roger Moore. The weird part about it is they actually were going to do yet another movie with George Lazenby. They said it actually wound up doing well. Hmm. And they were going to do another. And, and George Lazenby, uh, thinking very intelligently, uh, uh, passed on it. Wow. That he didn't want, yeah, not uh, not a smart move. No, but didn't they bring back, there was a big lawsuit over one of the bonds, so they had somebody else uh, do it. Uh, it was made, there was a huge now, lawsuit. Now, let's take that info. I want to know what George did instead of another Bond movie. What oh, a dumb move God, on his yeah. part. Yeah. What movie did he end up doing after that? I don't know. I know George Obviously, went it's a movie none of us know. Well, it, it's <laughs> just you. like the, <laughs> the next door neighbor and married with children. Ted McGinley? Uh, uh, no, no, he came later on. The, the les oh, oh, the the brown, the black haired yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was married to the lesbian actress. Yes, uh, yes, Darcy. Yeah, well, uh, he decided to leave the show, and I think he's he said since then. It was like the dumbest mistake of his life ever. Well, what's the Eric Stoltz didn't do Back to the Future? They fired him. Oh, they yeah. fired him. Okay. Yeah, they, he got they fired because he was wearing the mask mask. Yeah. yeah. They started. <laughs> they were already filming him, but they just didn't think it was working out. Harvey Keitel in Apocalypse Now. Wow. Uh, they started shooting him. He originally had the part that Martin Sheen took, and it wasn't working out. Oh. That you know? sounds crazy. Yeah, I think because he finally got up to Colonel Kurtz, he was like, show me how you suck a cock. <laughs> <laughs> Are these... So, yeah, they fi I think they fired him. Or, or, or it might have been a scheduling issue. They, they painted it. I would love to see fucking footage of him as Colonel. Oh, as, my as, God. As, uh, as, as Martin Sheen's character. See, yeah. I think he would have been great in that part. Yeah, it might have been, been the schedule because I think Coppola yeah. was going to go way over and maybe he just didn't want to do it. Mm. I, I don't know how long they shot him for. Maybe a week. Sounds crazy. You, you got to tell Harvey. Yeah, look, this isn't working out. Can That's got to be very that? hard. Imagine that conversation. Yeah, 1980. He was already famous. So this is the movie uh, George made instead of another James Bond uh, flip. So. Oh, I don't know. A, a, a little movie called Who Saw Her Die? Ooh. Oh, I love that one. <laughs> that classic. And on my podcast, we spend five episodes talking about... Uh, who saw her die? Well, the interesting <laughs> thing is, it, it was about a clothing factory. It's spelled D Y H. <laughs> I'm, I'm teasing, gang. I don't want to get sued. <laughs> uh, I guess Eric's not coming in here. He, he says, to, uh, "Ask Gilbert about uh, well, the famous story, Danny Thomas and the Glass Table." Oh, that's uh, a classic. Okay, according to legend, yes, uh, Danny Thomas. Uh, what he was into, he'd lie under a glass coffee table as girls would shit on the table. Yeah, we've heard this story yeah. with other celebrities. Sure, some of us have lived it. Who are the, who, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, then you hear others where the shit falls directly on the... Who else have you heard this about? Uh, Chuck, Chuck Berry? Chuck, Chuck Berry. Chuck Berry. Chuck Berry. I've heard about Stallone. Stallone, yeah, that just... came out a bunch of years ago. I would, Stallone, I haven't heard as much. Danny Kay, I've heard, Danny and Kay Chuck Berry heard. is the most famous well, one see, I've heard. Danny, oh, yeah. The Danny Kay that I've heard is that Danny Kay and Lawrence Olivier used to uh, 
finger each other's assholes and stuff. <laughs> I never heard yeah. Danny. Was he gay, Danny? I didn't know that. Danny K. K. Oh, maybe they're just mispronouncing his name all those years. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Danny K. and Lawrence Olivier. Oh, wow, that's a, I, that's I a bombshell. Heard, depending on who you hear the story from, yes. one of them pretended to be a uh, a security agent at the airport yeah. and put on a mustache and French accent and said... Oh, monsieur, you have to come with me. We have, to, uh, we think you might have weapons or drugs. And, it, I, you know, it's either Danny Kay or Olivier bringing the other one in. And I heard it was Danny Kay, and he was going, Oh, take off your pants and underwear, sir. And <laughs> Olivier stripped naked, and Danny Kay was sticking his finger <laughs> his up, right up Olivier's there. asshole. Wow. Some people say Olivier was sticking his finger yeah. in Danny Kay's head. <laughs> I'd like to think that they both yes. did. Yes. That's because, how he got knighted. And, <laughs> and, and, and I, because I think a relationship should be equal. <laughs> See, I, I, I said, I heard that Danny Kay was the one, and I heard that Olivier yeah. would say to him, he tied him up in a robe, and he would say, is it safe? And then he'd put a drill in Danny's asshole. <laughs> I, I heard when Olivier was sticking his hand in Danny yeah. Kay's ass, yeah. Danny Kay could go, oh, thumbelina, thumbelina, <laughs> tiny little thing. Gilbert, you're like, you're like TMZ for the 40s. <laughs> 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 oh, and there's a great photo. Oh, we, my God. We found a great picture of Danny Kay where it looks like his Dan hiney might be hurting right and there. And Olivier oh. is right behind yeah, him. And Danny Kay has no yeah. shirt on, and he's leaning over a sink. Oh, oh, oh yeah. No. Okay, that's the smoking gun he right there. He was in good shape, Danny Kay. Yeah. I didn't yes. realize he was in great shape. Yeah, he, uh, he <laughs> definitely course. worked on his arms that's in the Orson gym. Orson Welles in the back. Which wow. one's Orson? Oh, there's Orson. Yeah. Oh, my God. That's I recognize like Jackie Orson Welles. Oh, oh I didn't even see him. Wow. Who's who's that? They all put a finger in Danny Kay's ass. It looks like someone named Robert Helpman. Robert oh. Helpman. Oh, that, no, that was what fucking uh, Danny Kay was saying. And so, 1951, Danny Kay leaning over a sink with no shirt on, washing off his mat with uh, the boys off. behind him. <laughs> yeah, all the boys. All the boys yeah, behind. That's Danny right. Kay. Olivier ready to do a little asshole fingering. <laughs> and I know Olivier. Uh, has his hand in a fist. Uh -huh. Yes, he does. So, <laughs> yes. <laughs> this must have been later in the relationship. Now, there was another one. Oh, yeah? This, are, are we uh, still talking about the glass table? There was this actress okay. who was married to a fighter. She was more modern day, Vicky like in the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> but supposedly there's, there's a sex tape of her getting fisted in the ass by, Ooh. and fighters have big hands. Yes, with gloves on them too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is it an actress we know? Uh not an actress that you know, I if if you ask me one movie or T V show she ever did, I couldn't name I know oh, who okay. she is. You, it's you Mabel King from What's Happening. <laughs> <laughs> it was after the diabetes no, uh, cost her her legs. No, but she is at least black or half black. Okay. Oh, oh, yeah. right. oh half, right. black. half black. Half black or half black. Mm. Yeah. Now the Ruby D. It's Ruby D. <laughs> <laughs> Now the glass coffee table. I would go underneath it for the goof. You'd go under oh, for the yeah. goof, right? Yeah. But not for, not for the I, turn on. I I don't know. See, I feel like. If I did it, even as a goof, it's like something you can never turn back from. <laughs> it like means you did it. <laughs> yeah, but I would no, and I'm then, doing it because it's just silly yeah, to me. Yeah, but see, people would talk about you for the for uh, centuries. Well, you don't let them and, know. You kind of keep that no, under your hat. No, we were. were trying to get it done in the studio for the goof. Really? Yeah. Yes, I'd do it for the goof. And, and wow. what what happened? I she just, was constipated yeah. or something. <laughs> exactly. I would, I would laugh like an idiot. I know I would. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. would just start laughing. Me like, too. Who gets turned on by this? I know. Well. <laughs> so, yeah. nah, some people do. That's a weird oh, one. Jimmy's uh, had stories over the years. Gilbert, have Just you heard those down at the Comedy Cellar? Uh, Jimmy and some of his I've stories. Just, I just made them up. Yeah. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some are disgusting. Yeah. A little bit. <laughs> They're just stories. Just stories. I'm, I'm lying. To pass the time. It's not just some. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So who's this actress? I want to know who this half black actress is. Mm. Okay, I'll give you another hint. Okay. okay. She she for a while, the biggest job I remember her doing 
was an infomercial where she's like basically the host. Dionne Warwick. Uh, no, no, uh, no. That's a good one, though. Yes, it certainly is. Uh, uh, but she was interviewing a psychic. Mm. Mm. Uh, Cle Mrs. Cleo? Uh, no, no, this was a guy oh, shit. who goes, you know, I remember talking to Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> RFK! And, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and it's that which is good because, of course, Marilyn Monroe can really argue the point. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> no kidding. Oh, yeah. after she was dead, he was saying. Yeah, oh, oh yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, uh. I don't know who this is. Oprah. This is Oprah. Yeah, yes, it's Oprah. Oprah's the actress. Oh, we're looking. Here. You're going to have to just write it down for I us. I don't know who she is. We don't know. This, this is the Mom's Mabelie. That's who yeah. it was. <laughs> Mom's yes, like to be go. fisted in the rectum. What, what you please, <laughs> your victimized. <laughs> why, why isn't Eric coming in here? I, I hope Merv Griffin <laughs> shoves his fist in my and then... Off a teacher, <laughs> awful stuff. <laughs> what was the big song she did? Where have they gone? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh God. Uh, JFK and oh. Oh yeah, God yeah. Damn that it. that one. Uh, Abraham. Uh, Abraham Martin. Abraham John. Martin. Martin, John. Martin and Abraham. Yeah. Can you play that? So where yeah. the fuck is that? Moms could really belt yes. this one out. Yeah. Sing us a tune, you old babe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, love. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Muff. Muff. There she is. Oh, what a delight. Yeah, here she goes. Yeah. This is a huge hit. She dressed like a homeless woman. Yeah. Has anybody here? Her voice is deeper than when I was doing her. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't, you didn't oh, get that deeper, <laughs> what is she referring to? <laughs> she, does, she, does she have teeth in her mouth? No. No. no okay, she sounds didn't like have she teeth. Yeah. I just looked around and he was gone. He was gone. Oh, now I'm getting a hard night. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Well, she's going into the Kennedys now. Wait, Get your dicks put, out. Put it in another quarter. <laughs> 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 This is a four-quarter video. Yes. <laughs> yes. She looks like English from Escape from Alcatraz. <laughs> <laughs> Two reasons you didn't sit on my step. Uh, you can turn the volume down. We don't yeah, get all songs. Yeah, yeah. It's it actually, I mean, it's I actually a really it's good an song. Awesome, I just couldn't remember the it name. It really is. It's, uh, Gilbert had it. Abraham, Martin, and John. Didn't she sing that too? Didn't Hugh Hefner had a show where he would interview people. Oh, yes. Uh, Playboy After Dark. Yeah, mm. and he had like a lot of black performers on and way he, back. He would always make it like, it's a party going on at the Playboy yeah. Club, and the door would open up, and it's like, oh, Robert Culp just stopped in. Hey, like it was a big surprise. Yeah, very odd collection of people. But I, was Mom's Mabley on that? I know Sammy was on it. And for some reason, oh, I think Mom's sure. Mabley. Oh, sure, she mm. must have been. That was right around that time period. And her singing that, I remember her, I, I vaguely remember her singing that in front of all these, like, fucking, like, hot Playboy bunnies. Okay. And they had to just sit oh, there with their oh, mouths yes. cl closed and you, enjoy it. Yeah, you're trying to jerk off, and yeah. then she comes. Right. Yeah. Well, Where Jimmy has Abraham gone? gone? <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. Well, oh, and then you come oh, immediately. No. <laughs> Jimmy Durante got burned in a fire. What happened? <laughs> hey. <laughs> <laughs> With Sammy Davis Jr., they just yeah, showed. That's right. He now, them. I remember yeah. a Mom's, Mom's Mabley. I'm the only person who seems to remember this. Not, not Mom's not. Mabley going on to Murph Gitton. Oh, <laughs> Murph, Murph, Murph. And, <laughs> and singing Shamus of the Shul, which I remember. It went. Uh, he he couldn't read, he couldn't write, but he was nobody's fool. <laughs> That's why he could never be the shamish of the shul. <laughs> <laughs> Surprisingly, it was not a big hit. <laughs> what is the shamus of the shul? I, I, I have no idea. I know what a shul is. I don't know what a shamus. What's a shul? 
Now, uh, the uh, Jew place. <laughs> oh, the shamans. Oh, no, that's shaman. Yeah. Are you sure it's not shaman of the shul? Uh, shaman? Oh, sh- I don't know. Shamus. I got to see this. Really. I don't know if this is it. We might have All right, it. We're let's just see. guessing. Oh, what? Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> Fire. Oh, I, I, I give my children a slogan to carry them over for the week. Mom's slogan this week is quit it if you can't do nothing with it. <laughs> mm. They weren't all hits. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> if you can do something with it, get it. Get it. All right, where's the singing part? I'm cutting ahead. This was yeah. really filthy stuff back then. Really? It was yeah. very, yeah. very double entendre heavy. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Mm. Well, that was back when you'd say nudist colony, and everyone, ooh, uh-huh. yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah. I saw Pat Cooper recently, and he was talking about doing Sullivan, and he said that you couldn't say pregnant. And, and he goes, you had to say expecting. Yeah. She was expecting. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's the trouble I had with I Love Lucy. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. they could oh. separate beds. Right. And yeah. all that Where crap. it should have been the whole racial thing. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing that that wasn't a bigger deal. Yeah. Right. Being married to a Cuban. Cuban yeah, well, it was all silly. back then. Yeah, and the whole, uh, the whole, the whole fucking storyline with Ethel and Fred. Uh, oh, was read that, the, that, uh, the, uh, yeah. the orange yeah. slices. Was that? Yeah. The orange yeah. Slices. <laughs> yes. yeah. Where Lucy would hold one of Ethel's legs and Fred would hold the other, and, and Ricky would try to throw his Bobaloo. Oh, oh, oh. I was going to say Bobaloo drums into her cunt, and my headphones fell off. <laughs> kind of wrecked the punchline there. Oh, it really I, I spoiled remember, everything. I remember when uh, Mom's Mabley used to sing. Babalu drums into my <laughs> cunt. <laughs> that was oh Merv <laughs> and, and Arthur Dreacher. I would like to ding Babalu drums into my cunt. I've got Babalu drums in my cunt. They got put there by Alan Funt. <laughs> this is the most press Mom's maybe has ever gotten. <laughs> <laughs> She's at Caroline's this weekend, folks. <laughs> Mom, 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 I like. Hey, <laughs> oh, God, you rule. Uh, E-Rock is finally in studio, and, and he's saying that they turned Ricky into a Puerto Rican. Puerto Rican, yeah. Really? Oh. Instead of Cuban, you think that was the whole Castro thing? Or? It was Cuban. At the well, start. that was before Castro. Wait, get into problem. a mic. That's the honest. He was Cuban for how was, long? I don't know how long, but when they started the show, he was Cuban. And then when the whole thing went down, they all of a sudden he was Puerto Rican. Mm. They just said he was Puerto Rican. And never, I, didn't, I never knew they said he was Puerto Rican. I, no, I, I, never, I, I never, never heard, heard this either. Puerto Rican I never heard part. that either. No. Because the whole Cuban thing was a, obviously a huge storyline. Yeah. Right. He was a Cuban player at the bongos and the yeah. conga. Yeah, Iraq is wrong. And, and when he shoved his drums and bombs made these kind of. <laughs> yes. Oh, and, but you couldn't say drums. Yeah. <laughs> you had to say percussion <laughs> instruments <laughs> into her cut. You can still say <laughs> 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 I got percussion <laughs> instruments in my cut. <laughs> Where's John Bonham gone? <laughs> I like Derwood Kirby and Alan Fund. <laughs> Oh, there's so few people that rhyme with content. <laughs> <laughs> Eventually, if I lived long enough, I would have met Helen Hunt. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Eric, you got a question for Gilbert, E Rock, from the podcast or anything? Uh, well, you, you already covered all the highlights with Danny Thomas and uh, Cesar Romero. Well, now I got to go back and listen to those podcasts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he just had Bob Costas on. Not, oh, how was uh, that? Oh, was really he was good. he was great. Bob really? Costas. Did he loosen up a little bit? Oh, uh, yeah. I well, I told him. Yeah? I was telling him like some long, dirty joke, and Bob Costas actually, I it's it's on uh, my Facebook page. We put it up. Bob Costas actually fell to the ground and was crawling around on all fours, laughing. So wow. he actually he actually loosened up. 
Wow, I, I'm surprised. I, I'm surprised what? he would do your podcast. Someone yeah. like Bob Costas, and, and he told a story about uh, when it was like the uh, the day of I don't know the the years after the Munich yeah. massacre. Yeah, seventy-two. Uh, yeah, he thought they should do like something to uh, mention it, and the Olympic Committee was totally against that. They said, "No, that's politics." We don't get involved, and he said, wow. "I he said I don't care. Yeah, uh, I'm having a moment of silence. Good for him. Yeah, mm. and I thought that was th so that I have great we, respect. Yeah, we found the clip. It's only a minute. I got to see this. It's from uh, was it to honor the perpetrators? <laughs> <laughs> Costas is a real anti-Semite. It's from <laughs> it's from Gilbert's Facebook page, and we'll we'll tweet it out because it's a YouTube video. It's uh, Bob Costas dives under table. <laughs> And then he goes, all right, lie down on the couch. And the model lies down naked on the couch. And the old Jewish man gets on top of her. And he starts squeezing her tits and her ass and sucking on her tits. Wow. He's hiding. He's hiding under the table. He's hiding under the table. He's hiding. He's hiding. <laughs> he got Bob Costas crawling around on all fours. Oh, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. You humanized Bob Costas. Yes. He's crawling around on the floor. <laughs> Please circle. <on> <laughs> <the> <laughs> He's just trying to hide. Back to us. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's a great clip. The wow. His hands and knees. You have to see that. <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, it's like a home movie at Danny Kaye's house. <laughs> <laughs> Did he all starts off funny. He's laying under yeah. the table. Uh, <laughs> Did you know Bob Costas before that? I never met him. Uh, I, I heard he, someone told me he was a fan of mine. So I That's figured, pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I I think you have to go at ten. I that sucks. Yeah, he does, right? I have sort to, of, kind of. Yeah, I have to do. Actually, I'm doing a recording for Cyber Chase, mm. which is a children's cartoon. <laughs> That's a pedophilia. <laughs> I, I haven't seen Cyber Chase yet. My no, kid, I've I, been involved in them. I'm doing the <laughs> Mom's Mabley character. <laughs> 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 Enjoying this song, he's gonna uh, do. Rich Little will be doing uh, Merv Griffin <laughs> and Arthur Treacher, yeah, and maybe Johnny Carson. I'll uh, oh yeah, I'll take Monday off. <laughs> <laughs> Cyber Chase. I, I might have to get the kids into this. Is it for the younger kids or? Oh yeah. All I right. Think, yeah. I'll check it out. I'll have the kids check it out. Uh, Gilbert, what I, I what I love about you is where you just completely go over the line. <laughs> Well, at least it's never gotten me in trouble. Uh, well, thank but, God. Uh, but you, thank God I've never lost work over it. But you never, but you never really cared about that you know. in general. You just, you knew, you knew what the consequences would be. But I, I respect you for that, for real. Because people Cause always, always you know wonder where the line is on the podcast. A lot. I don't know how many times the guests will call the next day. Cause they they loosen up and yeah. I thought and they go uh you know I I do like a children's show could you cut out that thing about eating a girl's asshole out while she's jerking me off can you that, that part I thought I was pushing it because I'm because I'm a regular character on Sesame Street. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, could you cut out the part where a guy's fisting me in the ass because I am Mr. Rogers after all. <laughs> that was your Activia sponsor. <laughs> could, could you cut out where I'm shoving bongo drums in mom's mailies gun? <laughs> percussion, percussion, percussion. Oh, percussion instruments. I'm sorry. Okay. See, I said bongo drums. Could you cut out the bongo drums and just leave in cunt? <laughs> yeah. Could you dub in another instrument? Yeah. <laughs> I have a Les Paul sponsorship. Oh, no, that's great. Yeah, you, you get them to loosen up and then they go home and like, oh man. They, oh yeah. They take that shower to get the filth off them and then realize yeah. I got yeah. <laughs> I gotta call Gilbert. I, I might be in trouble with that one. Do you take the stuff out? 
Uh, yeah, Sometimes. yeah, because I don't want to lose work for them. Yeah. You know, me, I don't care so much. Yeah. I'm used to I, it. I love where you just oh. blow past that line. I'll yeah. go for real, man. <laughs> for it's a real. great cover for the podcast, too. It's like an old movie. It's like the yeah. old movie poster. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Which is really, it's got Gilbert's head on it. It looks like something that was drawn in 1952. It's like an old school movie poster. Eric, you, you had something over there. Uh, two, yes. th- two other great things about Gilbert's podcast is one is Gilbert is like the human Mr. Skin. So he knows that in old movies he can tell you who was naked and where they were naked in and, the movie. And that's coming from Mr. Skin Tag. So. Yes. Oh. <laughs> wow. Plus he always tries to find out uh, which old actor was uh, hiding from being Jewish. Ah. Oh, uh, yeah. the well, day. Cary Grant. Oh. Cary Grant was a Jew. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Got to take that poster down. Yeah. <laughs> 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 We've talked about it on our show when we were growing up. They would just throw tits in a movie just for the quick uh, thrill, and then oh yeah, and then we lost about two decades. It's finally coming back again. I but know. But that used to be great in the. They movies. used to be like particularly like the eighties. Yes, yes. It became great for just they throw in and they'd have like nudity yeah. for no reason, no reason other whatsoever. than nudity, and there would be these movies like Blame It on Rio. Oh yeah, and Michael stuff Caine. Like, yeah. And they just have, like, naked girls all around. They were just uh, titillating. Yeah. And, you know, I I am more turned on by uh, R-rated nudity than porn. I'm completely with, with Come you on. on. Yes, it's no. the same. Yeah, what? I don't know what it is, but, you know. It leaves a little to the imagination. No. Also, also, it's like. The girls in R-rated nudity are actually a lot of them legitimate actresses, right? Getting naked, and, it's when, mo- and it feels more believable. Yeah, that's what gets you too. Like, oh, yeah. this, this could actually happen. And when you see a porn actress, you go, hey, you know, she's uh, got every disease in the world. And... <laughs> I don't know if I should be. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Doing this <laughs> takes out a little bit. <laughs> when you see Mom's Maybelline <laughs> having got, uh, oh, <laughs> sorry. Percussion. Oh, Mom, could you shove some percussion instrument inside my cunt? Thank you, Arthur Treacher. Uh, never gets new. Uh, I think. And- yeah, go with Gilbert. So the, it's Gilbert Gottfried's Amazing Colossal Podcast. You can hear it on gilbertgottfried.com. Subscribe on iTunes, Sideshow Network.tv. And my Twitter is at Real Gilbert. Real Gilbert. And uh, Jim, you trouble? want to tell him this thing that's coming up? Well, next with Tuesday. From this show. Oh, my God. Welcome to Treat City. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's Treat <laughs> Williams' new that's, series. Yes, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, October 6th, I'm doing Gilbert's podcast, Littlefield Theater, which nice. I think is it, it's in Brooklyn. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, 6 o'clock, are the doors open, 7 o'clock is the podcast. Tickets are 15 bucks. And it's part of this New York Super Week for podcasts. And if you want to see uh, Gilbert live, October 8 through 10, a great club in Tampa, Side Splitters. Which is a really awesome room. Yeah. October seventeenth, Governors uh, in Long Island in Levittown. Great club. October twenty two through twenty four, Philly in Helium, which is an amazing club. And the twenty ninth through thirty first, I've never done this place, Jukebox in Peoria, Illinois. Oh, it's a good room. Yeah. And then I don't know what uh, I understand. Uh, nope, I almost had a real bad joke, and I cut the cord. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> and you're staying out. Of, you're staying out of trouble, Gilbert, on the Twitter and all. Yeah. Well, see, no, first no controversies. I have, first, I have to get a job. Okay. And then, and then, and then you can't I help yourself. <laughs> they can't <laughs> fire you from the podcast. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, we finally did it, Gilbert. We've been looking forward to this for a long time. So I, yeah. I really appreciate you coming on. For real. See? I've, always, I've always been a huge fan of yours. Oh, huge. thank you. Just going serious for a second. That's all. Yeah. Now we can go back to. <laughs> <laughs>